At the end of this tape, there's a news thing about the explosion uh, that we're going to talk about now. Rocco Marinucci, boom boom, they call him. He was a Philadelphia hood. Uh, under the pretense of delivering a pizza to Boss Philly, Boss Phil Testis' house, um, he put a remote control bomb behind a wall where the front door was. Uh, Marinucci owned a pizza shop. It's called Pop's Pizza in South Philly. He, he arrived in a black van that belonged to the pizza shop, and I guess it gave him time to put the bomb there. It was a very powerful, very well-made bomb. It was packed with nails, a little dynamite, and BB pellets. So when Testa, who lived alone since the 1980 death of his wife, she had died just a year before, arrived there, he was finishing a night's work at his business for Gilio's restaurant at 5 Bank Street in Philly. He double parked his black Chevy Caprice Classic in the street, climbed up the stairs to the porch where the bomb was hidden. He couldn't see it, it was dark, it was in the shadows. Test opened the uh, storm door and as he began to put the key in the front door, the bomb was detonated. I think it was, I'm not sure. I think it was a remote control detonation. Well, a year later, on March 6, 1982, actually it was a year and one day later, March 16th, 1982, Marnucci was found beaten and fatally shot five times in the center of the neck, uh, left chest, the back of the head, exactly in the back of the head, uh, in the torso. He was stuffed in a trash bag and left in a parking lot in South Philadelphia. In his mouth were eight, not three, as it's been reported, eight unexploded, unexploded cherry bombs. It was a symbol of uh, we know what you did. The killer was more than probably Testa's son, Salvia Testa. Then in 1980, late 1982, this character, Ted Di Pretoro, he was 23 years old. He's only 23 years old. He's already serving a life sentence in another issue, another matter. He confessed to taking part in that, and he just blew the whole thing on everybody. He said, uh, when they asked him, well, how do you feel about having killed this guy for someone you didn't know and didn't have a problem with? He said, I'm just saying that I feel not responsible. Not that I actually, with my own hands, killed a man. I didn't throw the switch. I had no choice, but I had to go through with it. He said he had to go through with it because Rocco Maranucci scared him and would probably kill him if he didn't do it. March 1980, Philadelphia mob boss Angelo Bruno was shot as he sat in his car. The murder is still under investigation, but the Justice Department has filed papers in court reporting that three different informants say this man ordered the murder, Frank Thierry. He is described